Jay Uso made a very interesting admission in this video. I'm going to tell you exactly what he had to say. In fact, I could even go as far as saying it was a confession because fans around the world in WWE, well, they've been speculating whether or not this is actually true or not. Now the man has actually confirmed it. If you look at the trajectory of Jay Uso, it's actually quite fascinating how he has come to where he is now. Why he has come to where he is now. Because Jay Uso, main event Jay Uso, is one of the hottest WWE stars going today. He is on the elite of the elite on the Monday Night Raw roster right now. He's up there with the lights of Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre and CM Punk and Gunther and Damian Priest. Like, I could make the case that he's more over than our world heavyweight champion and Damian Priest right now. The fans are behind him. And why is that? Well, my theory behind his connection with the fan base, they've seen him grow up, right? If you go back to 2020 during the pandemic when he feuded with Roman Reigns, our tribal chief for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at the time, they made him a lovable, relatable babyface, someone that you could get behind, someone that you could believe in, what he stood for. Hard work, doing it on his own. That was the two qualities in which got Jey Uso over with the fan base. And he has done a lot of great work since then. Whether it be that singles run against Roman Reigns during the pandemic when he tried to become the new tribal chief, yet failed. Whether it was him accepting his alliance in the bloodline. Whether it be him pointing out Sami Zayn didn't belong. Whether it was him and Sami Zayn's friendship on television, his connection with his brother Jimmy Uso yet again for another dominant Uso's title reign as a tag team champions, whether it be him splitting away with the bloodline and now on Monday Night Raw as a single star. Heck, I could even include his run as tag team champions, although brief, with Cody Rhodes last year. Now, I understand that Jey Uso is not for everyone, but what he has done recently is he has gotten over more than a lot of people on the current WWE roster. Look at his freaking entrance. That, my friends, is an example of a gimmick being over. When you are coming out and the fans are chanting yeet, yes, he got the word yeet over. He is one of the top merch sellers for WWE week in and week out. And not just one item. He's not just selling a t-shirt. He's selling multiple t-shirts. And he was recently on the Battle Round podcast and he was talking about his sunglasses. And, and fans have been like, this is kind of a, a Bret Hart gimmick infringement, right? Because Bret Hart, he had those big bulky glasses. Now Jey Uso has big bulky glasses, obviously different designs, but this is what Jey Uso had to say about whether or not he was stealing the look from Bret Hart. He said, there was an old commercial with Bret Hart. Do you remember it? That commercial came on and he had pink glasses. I automatically light bulb, like I need blue ones. I need the exact ones, but blue. Remember, it had the rubber strap on the back and it was very flimsy. I wanted that whole look. I wanted that. We couldn't get that, but kind of took a little bit to make mine. But I stole the whole idea from Bret Hart, end quote. So at least the man is honest, right? At least he will fess up and be like, yep, I, I completely ripped that off from Bret the Hitman Hart. One of the best to ever do it. One of the best to ever step inside of the ring. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. That guy, the WB Hall of Famer, the former WB champion, one of the goats of this industry in terms of being an in-ring technician. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. Wrestling is that. You take a little bit here, you take a little bit there, you morph it into yourself, or you take a la Bret Hart. It's not like he's coming out there in full Bret Hart gear and he's working a Bret Hart match and he has the exact same look as Bret Hart. He just took a little bit from him and now he's turned it into him, right? And, and he even went with blue glasses instead of pink. But like, he has also taken something from someone else. Do you know what that is? Well, in a minute, I'll tell you what it is and who it is. I understand that Jey Uso has suffered some setbacks as of late, right? He didn't win the Men's Royal Rumble match. 
He fell short to Gunther in the King of the Ring tournament. But I will say this. Jey Uso is someone that WWE can really rally behind. And to a certain degree, they've already done that because he is one of the driving forces, one of the leading forces in WWE right now. He is one of their biggest draws on Monday nights, right? He is being put in key segments with key people drawing key ratings and key engagement. That's what Jey Uso brings to the table. Who is this other person that he's drawing from? Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt, if you look at, and this is kind of an organic thing, but he's going with it for sure, and WB's going with it for sure, where Bray Wyatt, he would come out, and the Fireflies would come out, as they quoted it, where people would put on flashlights on their phones or just raise up their phones, and it would light up the dark arena. Well, now WB is doing that with Jey Uso, and it's such an awesome effect, and I hope that they do it more often, because it does give off Such a cool, cool look. And it's also, so you get the fireflies, but then when they're raising their hands and legitimately like a backlash France, they were going nuts. I mean, it was shaking the arena. And yes, he fell short to Damian Priest in that World Heavyweight title match at Backlash France. Something I'm okay with because it was not realistic that Jey Uso was going to necessarily dethrone Drew Matt, or excuse me, Damian Priest right then and there. Like, we knew that, but at the same time, I didn't like the finish. I thought they could have protected both guys a lot more. They they insist on doing this 20-year thing with Damian Priest, and I don't understand it because he's not over as a baby face. He's more over as a heel than anything, and you kind of lack heels right now. I understand Drew McIntyre is the biggest heel, and, and you have Gunther, but at the same time, on the baby face side, you have CM Punk, you have Seth Rollins, you have Jey Uso, right? And... If you're going to be a champion, you might as well keep it heel, right? We just had a long, 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 almost a year-long babyface run in Seth Rollins as our champion. So it's like, what are we doing? But I thought they could have protected both the guys better. I thought Jey Uso didn't need... Look, you could have done it two ways. Either you could have just had a dominant Damian Priest win, okay, and just beat Jay clean put more heat on Damian Priest or you could have saved Jey Uso by having outside interference and Damian Priest going with it instead of trying to fight it because at the end of the day what they did was they had outside interference by Judgment Day Damian Priest didn't want it he still beat Jay clean and then after the match they tried to attack him and Damian Priest stopped JD Madonna and Finn Balor from attacking Jey Uso and it just felt weird right? Jey Uso didn't get anything from it. Damon Priest didn't get anything from it. And it's like, well, what are we doing then if no one is getting heat from absolutely no direction, right? Like you have to go with either or, or it just doesn't work. In my opinion, let me know down in the comments area below. What do you think about Jey Uso's confession and mission, if you will? And I will see y'all in the next video.